Good afternoon and welcome back to the workbench. Today I have a pair of speakers here um, which I'm going to take a look at. The uh, Logitech Z213 uh, 2.1 channel little system um, two speakers and a small subwoofer. Um, it's one that my friend has and he said that the the audio jack for the, the speakers um, doesn't work properly or something, that it's uh, got an issue and doesn't always allow sound to come out. Um, but the headphone jack works fine. And he said it's been like that since he bought it. Um, he didn't bother taking it back because it worked most of the time, but now it's uh, gotten worse to the point where it only works half the time. And I said, well, I'll have a look and see what's up. So I'm guessing it could just be a, uh, a problem with the jack, um, broken solder joints maybe, or could be even dirty contacts, simply. Um, the fact that it didn't work from the uh, from new properly suggests that um, could be a, a bad solder joint. Um, but yeah, we'll just uh, see how it goes, I suppose. And when I get this thing open, we'll have a look at it. Um, it's a pretty simple little system, and the subwoofer box itself is very very light. It's probably under half a kg, so. I'm guessing that inside there is probably a switching power supply and a Class D amplifier. Um, it does not have the weight of anything other than that, really. It seems like it'll be all purely switching. So that'll be interesting. Um, but I don't think that'll be the problem. I think it'll be the jack, most likely. Or it could even be the uh, something wrong with the plug here um, for the speakers themselves. Um, he did say that the headphone jack worked fine, which is on this little control pod thing which is, has, a, has a volume control and the on off switch on it but anyway I'll plug it in and test it um, and we'll just see if I can make sure the fault is reproducible alright so I've got the thing uh, plugged in and I've got it connected to my phone to play some some uh, free music on here and we'll just see if we can figure out what's going on um, so we turn it on here light does come on I heard a little sort of thump from the speaker there um, let's play this and see what happens Well, that does seem to be working just fine. You can probably hear that. Um, just wiggle the cable. It does feel a little loose in there, I must say. Yeah, I don't know if you can see this on the camera there, but... Um, It's not exactly the most the tightest plug I've seen. It's quite uh It's a little bit loose. Seems to be working alright now, but um Yeah. Um, that's interesting. I don't know how easy it is to see on here, but I can push the uh, the jack to the left, and I can push it to the right, and it stays in that position. So it is a little bit loose there. I wouldn't expect that. Um, it shouldn't be. <laughs> oh, look at that! The uh, the subwoofer is completely exposed on the bottom. That's a good design. Um. I don't know if that's how they normally like, but hmm, seems like a good way you could easily shove your finger through it. Anyway, um, yeah, that does seem kind of odd. There's not as much wiggle up and down, but left to right, um, 
It does seem kind of loose, and I wonder if that's the problem. Um, maybe. I don't know, maybe the jack is just not tight enough. Um, but annoyingly, of course, it works perfectly fine. Right now, it seems to. Um, let's see if I can get it to go funny. He said that at low volumes it was worse. I also would wonder if possibly the headphone jack itself... Oh, this is not actually playing anything, it's just being silly. I'm just going to try plugging a cable in. This has got nothing connected to the other end of it. Um, into here and just see. Ah, yeah, listen to that. I don't think it's obvious that this is picking it up, but when I first plugged this in here um, and pulled it out again, for a moment the audio didn't come back straight away. Um, so I think it could just be the contacts in this are dirty. Um, because this is going to switch out the input to the amplifier. Obviously when you plug this in it's going to be a switch jack, whereas this one is probably just a normal jack with no switch. Um, so probably the switch contacts are not clean properly. Of course it would be inside this thing which looks like it's glued together. Um, I don't know, maybe not. Probably be screws underneath these feet. It certainly looks like that's a plausible problem because that is something I have seen before. Um, with a, a headphone jack on a pair of speakers that was causing them to work intermittently and uh, it was just dirty I think so um, yeah but still it could also be bad solder joint on there as well because when you put this in you know you physically move you, you put physical pressure on the jack and if the solder joints are bad so maybe I will try and open this and just have a look at it um, reflow, maybe if I open this I'll reflow the, the solder and also put con contact cleaner in it as well um, and yeah that's all I can really think of because at the moment it seems to be working mostly fine um, and if that doesn't fix it then yeah it's annoying, it's hard to troubleshoot something and the problem doesn't actually come up it's the kind of thing sometimes you probably have to use it for a while and see it looks like this is fairly easy to open. Um, you just pull off these little feet here and underneath you can see some Phillips screws. So I imagine there's just four of those, or maybe two. Um, lift those up and uh, take the thing off. And I'll have a look inside and see if there's anything funny going on. Well you know, I must say I like the way they've done this. It's just four screws on the bottom um, and then the whole thing just comes apart. And you've got the circuit board there on the end of a couple of cables. So you could definitely easily repair this if the cables were damaged or something else in here failed. Um, it's not glued shut which is really nice actually. Um, and even on the subwoofer here at the back they've got screws so it looks like the whole thing would be quite easy to fix. I um, don't know about the speakers themselves but uh, it probably doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so I've just got one of these little jacks here. It's just a simple one. Simple switched one here I think. Yeah, yeah, it's got switch contacts, so it's got, uh, let's see, yeah, it's got five, uh, five pins, it's got one there, one there, one there, one there, and one here, so that's ground, common, and then you've got, like, the input and output of the switch, um, for each of these, so when you plug the jack in, it cuts off the audio input to the, to the subwoofer amplifier, and uh, redirects it out to the headphones instead, so there's a good chance that those contacts are just not working properly. Um, you can even see inside the the, uh, the th casing there because it's clear, which is nice. Um, yeah. The other nice thing about that is it's a really common jack and you could easily buy a new one if you had to. Um, I've used a, a common standard part that's not some kind of 
custom made thing. The volume control is uh, custom unfortunately which is uh, a little bit annoying so if that if that worn out, wore out and you couldn't clean it um, you might have to get creative and do something um, add something on top and screw it through the side of the case or something but um, yeah aside from that it looks pretty good so the solder joints on here don't look look bad but I'll, I'll reflow them anyway I'll put some cleaner inside this um, plug it in and out a few times hope that fixes it if not um, could just replace the jack itself uh, they don't cost very much I think you know a few dollars um, like I said fortunately it is a looks like a pretty standard part assuming the pin out is um, isn't the same as the the ones you can get but yeah um, we'll try that and see what happens. So before I decided to clean this I thought I'd try measuring the, con the resistance across the two switched contacts and just see what we get so it's interesting on this one for example on one, one side um, we actually get a reading of a, a couple of ohms um, one and a half ohms approximately now it's going down a little bit but yeah that should be lower than that um, it is sort of changing a bit but it's, oh yeah, there we go, it goes up to 4 so that definitely does imply that there's something funny going on with those contacts and I'll try this side as well that one's better um, but yeah just before when I tested this it was spiking to like 8 ohms, 10 ohms I don't know if that was a bad connection with the multimeter probes or the actual contact but um, the fact that other one reads above above 1 ohms um, drops very slowly it, uh, yeah that's not right. A good contact should be a lot less than that. I mean, a good contact should basically be the same resistance as the actual multimeter probes themselves, which is, you know, point zero or something. Um, so yes, I uh, try filling it with this here <laughs> and uh, see what happens. See if that makes any difference. So I'll just squirt this in here. Um, I'll just fill it up. There we go. Get a whole lot in there. Um, and then I'll just plug this this cable in and out a few times. If it doesn't, the only real option is to replace the jack, I suppose. Um, but this is always good as a first try. <laughs> Alright, so I'll just wait for that to dry a little bit. And then I'll do another test on those contacts. Um, Let's just see if that changed anything, especially on this bottom one. Now yeah, look at that, it's uh, gone down a bit faster there, now it's 0.07, which is what you'd expect. It did, did come up as one briefly, but it didn't hang around there for a while like it did before on the other one. Let's try the other contact. There we go. It's also gone down pretty quickly to uh, low 
remember that. So if I move the probe slightly, sometimes it spikes to quite a high resistance. I don't know if that's just the probes themselves or the thing. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I'll resolder it as well and just see. All right, I'm going to reflow this thing. Um. Get some fresh solder on all of it. I may suck off the old stuff. It looks lead free and put some some new stuff on it. See if that makes any difference. And if it doesn't work, a new jack is only two dollars twenty from J car anyway, so um yeah. At least this is only a single sided PCB. things a bit easier. Not some big heavy thing with plated through holes and all that would be annoying. Anyway. So if you did have to replace it, it would be fairly easy to do. Alright. Put some fresh solder on it. Sorry, I don't know if the light is very good here at the moment. I think it might be a little bit overexposed, but uh, unfortunately I don't have my my lighting set up very well here. Whoops, that's got a solder blob on the side of it. That wouldn't work. Anyway, there we go. Um, let's see if that made any difference to the uh, the reading. Well, that's dropped down pretty low, pretty quickly. Of course, it's got flux residue on it now, so I'll probably have to press a bit harder. There we go, that goes down fairly quickly too. Um, yeah, they're both acting the same anyway. We don't have that lower one hanging around 1 ohms for a couple of seconds. Um, anyway. I'll just put a little bit more of this in here, just for fun. Alright, I think I'll have to resolder these connections for the volume control because I've been sort of pushing it over slightly by pushing on it, um, so in case that may have had a little bit of cracking there, I don't want it to fail and have another problem, so <laughs> I'll just fix that up. I mean, it doesn't actually look cracked or anything, it's just that uh, I don't want to risk introducing another problem. This board is also kind of um, quite anemic on the amount of solder on it anyway, so um, it could probably do with a little bit more. Everything else looks fine. Um, 
Yeah, I'm just see that little wire link there. It looked a little bit funny. All right. Let's stick it back together again. This just all slides into here, clips into there, make sure you got the LED through the hole and everything's aligned correctly, and then just put the screws back in. The screws go through holes on the PCB anyway, so that will keep it aligned fairly well. Alright. I've got the feet up here just sitting up there, but I won't put them back in just right away. Let's plug it in again first and see what happens. Let's see. Is it plugged in? Yep. Switch it on. Well, it still works. <laughs> Which is good. No weirdness so far, but I didn't detect any before anyway. Except that one time when I first tried plugging something in. Anyway, there we go. Um, it might be fixed. <laughs> Who knows? Hmm. At this point, I'll probably give it back to my friend, and uh, he can test it out again and see how it goes. Um, if the problem comes back, I may just replace that jack. It does seem a little suspect. Um, if that doesn't solve the problem, then I'll start looking at this end. But. Um, yeah, it could well be this. This thing could have been the problem. Like I said, I have a, uh, I had had a similar problem before on another speaker set of my own, um, where the headphone jack was a bit dodgy and it caused the sound to cut out to the speakers. All right, so there we go. The thing uh, is still working. Um, I guess I'll give it a bit of a test and see what happens, and then I'll give it back to my friend and see see what he thinks of it. Um, like I said, there's a socket up there from Jaker, two dollars twenty. I can get, you can get ones like that on eBay as well. Um, very cheap, probably even probably ten for two dollars twenty. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's nice to know that this thing uses pretty standard parts and has screws and everything. You can open it up uh, quite easily. So there we go. Um, sorry, that wasn't a very in-depth repair or anything, but uh, sometimes the simplest faults uh, potentially can cause annoying problems. Um, anyway, there may or may not be a part two to this if the problem comes back, but for now, I guess that uh, is about all I can do with it, and uh, hopefully that's it, and hopefully that was interesting, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> so curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to have a look inside this thing to see what's in there. Um, looks like the easiest way to do that is to take off the uh, subwoofer driver itself from the bottom, um, and then you can see inside the case here, which is uh, just a little particle board thing and you've got a little small switching power supply down in there as you can see um, it looks like they probably screwed that in before they put the case together and put the veneer around the outside which is kind of annoying so to get that out if it failed you'd probably have to uh, use a really short screwdriver um, or some sort of right angled thing some kind of right angled wrench attachment or something um, and you can see the base port up there um, and then the amplifier is just on that board there and I don't actually see any inductors so it may well not be a class D at all um, I thought that's what it would be but it is um, yeah I can't see anything like that there's just a there's an IC with a heatsink on it um, obviously I can't read the model number on that because there's a heatsink over the top of it um, and then there was another one in the back there that looks like maybe an 8 pin or or something, well, 
I can only see eight pins here, but it might be bigger than that. Um, and then around the back here, if you pull this out, um, there's another IC just here. Looks like about 16 pins or something. Um, it's also got some some uh, which interestingly has the center the center two pins on each side all bridged together so that could be heatsink pins so um, yeah, I don't know if that maybe is a the amplifier there I imagine they'd have a two two separate amplifiers possibly a two channel one to power the the front speakers and then another separate one to do the subwoofer which makes sense because you've got different frequency requirements for that anyway um, but yeah I can't see any any coils on the output of that at all so it looks like this whole thing may well be just a standard uh, standard linear amplifier just a low power um, high efficiency chip um, heat sink to the board in one case and with its own little separate thing in the other but yeah, um, I'm surprised at that. I really, really expected that to be a Class D of some kind, but maybe um, for cost saving it's actually more effective to just use this. Anyway, so that's interesting. Just thought I'd have a look at that. Um, but there we go. If anyone else needs to repair one of these, this is how you get the thing apart. And I couldn't help myself again. I just had to have a look at this chip. Um, very hard to see the model number on it. It's very fine markings. Um, not printed, very fine laser etching. I was able to get it just in the right light. I don't think I'll be able to get it with a camera, but it's a uh, a TEA2025, which is uh, yeah, a very simple sort of stereo integrated chip. Um, that one there. So yeah, um, pretty basic, definitely linear, not digital whatsoever. Um, so they are using a very simple. Uh, simple thing but I guess for the amount of power output this thing has is not a lot so it doesn't matter and they can get away with it um, but yeah there we go obviously I can't find out what the other thing is for the subwoofer because there's a heatsink over the top of it but there's probably uh, details online someone else has probably fixed one of these or something so but yeah there we go the Logitech Z213 that's what's inside that's how it works and uh, yeah, it's not too bad actually. For a small little cheap speaker set it actually sounds pretty good. Um, I'm kind of impressed considering how sort of basic and simple it is. So yeah, um, that's cool. Anyway, see you next time.